cost index is a parameter you enter tell the computer where you want it to make the speed and economy trade-off now in real aircraft this number is actually the operating cost in dollars per hour of the aircraft divided by the cost of fuel in dollars per pound it's a four-digit number however in the simulator it's a two-digit number between zero and ninety-nine zero being uh, maximum economy and ninety-nine being maximum speed minimized well I should say minimized flight time what, whatever that entails so I'll just go ahead and run it halfway in between we enter a cruise altitude I'm gonna start out at thirty-one thousand as we get further through the programming procedure we're gonna get the computer to tell us if that's optimal or maybe we ought to consider a different altitude but we'll start with that one step size ICAO uh, International Civil Aviation Civil Aviation Organization basically says that at above 31,000 feet you're going to step 4,000 feet at a time when you climb and below 31,000 you step 2,000 feet at a time. Uh, most commercial airliners uh, fly a steady altitude and then when they climb they do so in increments or what they call steps and uh, it's an important concept for long-range flights. This flight's so short I very much doubt we're actually going to have any steps. We're probably just going to go straight to an altitude and hold it but we'll let the computer tell us what's the most economical slash uh, speedy way to get there. If we go back to index, remember we're on the initial reference thing, so we have several options for initial reference, and we're just going to go through them. Um, position we did, and performance we did, and now it's time for thrust limits. Before we do the thrust limits, though, we really ought to um, tell it what runway we're on. So in order to do that we go to root. The first thing that's going on though is where we're starting and where we're going. We're starting from Amsterdam which is E-H-A-M. We enter that in this little area here which you've seen me using several times already. It's called the scratch pad. Anything you type goes here. Once you've got what you want in there you move it up to here. You can also if uh, something is already in here you can bring it down to the scratch pad, maybe edit it to something different or not, and then re it. And we're going to go to Malam Malpensa, which is L-I-M-C. And we're going to start out on runway 36 center. Because you always have to have two dudes here, so if you're using a runway 9, you got to enter 09. Alright, now you can see we have the little runway symbol pop up here. We told it where we are. We go back to init ref. Oh, I don't know, the reserves went away. Nevertheless, we want to do our thrust limits. What this does, we're going to use an auto throttle takeoff, which means we're going to advance the engines part way, and once the thrust stabilizes, we're going to tell the computer to go ahead and take over the throttles. What we're entering here is we're going to tell it how much throttle to give it. Now, if we don't do anything, we use takeoff power. It's going to look at the outside air temperature and compute the best N1 to use for our takeoff, which is 102.9%. This is sort of like a tachometer. Think of it that way. Um, it's actually the N1 rotor speed expressed as a percent. Now, if we want to take a be a little easier on our engines, we can actually derate that by 5%, and you can see that it's a takeoff one mode, and it's going to use 100.9, or 15% derate, and it's going to use 97.2. Takeoff one, takeoff two. The best efficiency, again, is always to use takeoff, which uh, will get us a certain climb, etc., and uh, get us off in an expedited manner. Now, one of the other things we can do if we want to derate the takeoff, and we don't want to use one of the set deratings, is we can assume to use, uh, let's say, an air temperature of 10 degrees C. And, again, you get a derate takeoff of 1.3. You don't actually have to do this, so I'm going to send a delete signal to that and it will go back. It'll always use this. If there's nothing here, it'll use this. That's all you have to remember. So, now we go to our takeoff parameters. The 747 can take off with either 10 or 20 degrees of flaps. We we're going to select 20. At least we'll see how it works. Flaps 20 until 1,000 feet. It's going to recommend some V-speeds. Uh, V1 is the speed after which you have to take off because you don't have enough runway to stop. VR is the point at which you should begin to rotate the aircraft and V2 is the point around which you will lift off the ground. It's a 
a number. It'll actually take off before that if you want to, but flight's not stable. So you always want to go to V2 before you lift off the ground. Now, these are small numbers with a caret, meaning it's a recommendation. So if I push the line select key, it becomes committed. VR and V2. Now you can see we've actually got V-speed centered here. 122 for V1. The rest of them are above that. We'll also go ahead and accept our compute as center of gravity, which will tell us what trim to use for takeoff. If we set this trim in the throttles now, then we will be trimmed for takeoff. We won't have to worry about screwing around with the trim while we're trying to climb the aircraft out. So I'll just go ahead and set this to 5.3. Right about there. I know it's hard to see, but it's easier if you're using in full screen mode. So, back to FMC. That completes the takeoff initialization. Uh, some parameters here. Engine out acceleration height means get to 800 feet before you try to accelerate. Thr thrust reduction flaps 5. Climb means when, uh, when I'm at flaps 5, or when I go to flaps 5, it's going to reduce the power setting to climb. Now, if you remember, under thrust limitations, we are armed climb. So what we're telling it here is that when we uh, go to flaps 5, I want you to reduce the power from takeoff to climb limitation. Again, it's just to save wear and tear on the engines primarily. So we've initialized essentially everything at this point. Um, so as far as the flight management computer is concerned, the aircraft is ready to take off but we still haven't told it how we're going to get to Italy. Now the next point in the programming, like I said, is to set up the route. We've given it the big picture, which is where we're starting from and where we're going. The next thing we want to do is tell it how we want to party Amsterdam. Now one of the ways you can do this is to go to the departure arrival button and select Amsterdam departure. It knows we're on 36C because we told it, and it's giving us four optional standard instrument departure routes. Now, the one we're going to use is the Ogina 1W departure. However, rather than pushing this button and having all those departure parameters entered for me, we're going to enter them manually so we can see how they're done. And you do that most easily in the legs page. Now, if you remember what this thing looks like, we're going to go off the runway, go to EH10, EH70, EH-36, Ogina, and Lopik. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter those waypoints in here, starting with EH-10 and 70, EH-010, EH-070. You can see how I use the line select key to save myself some time. Now EH-36. Now, Ogina followed by Lopik. And that is the departure route. Now, one of the things you also notice is that as I was doing that, it's entering waypoints in here and computing what a course is going to look like. And it's actually taking into account how the aircraft is capable of turning. If I activate this route, right now we're just prog we're just setting up route one. It, right now neither route, neither one, nor route two are actually active. So we want to activate route one. You basically can do this twice. There's two places you can put it. Execute just means you've made a change. Do you want me to begin using that change to fly the aircraft? Of course, the answer to that is yes. Once we do that, we now have an active route one on the legs page, and you can see that our course has turned magenta, which is what the aircraft is going to do. If we were to make a change in flight, you would see the new route in a dashed line with that execute button lit up, and when you push the execute button, the route, the current route will change, and the dashed line becomes magenta, and the old magenta line goes away.